Well, we are this morning uh, finishing our series on times of refreshing, and we all want times of refreshing, right? I mean, who doesn't? Who do, I mean, just the sound of it sounds what? Sounds good, it sounds refreshing. I mean, they use it as an advertisement, like, you know, selling drinks or whatever. Like, this is gonna help, this is gonna change your life. If you get this cherry limeade uh, right now, this is gonna change your life. And so, everyone, we want to be refreshed, right? We want to feel that energy of life. We wanna be rejuvenated, reinvigorated, right? It's something that's inside of us. Obviously, this summer, it's been hot, okay? If you've been outside much, it's like 100 and hell degrees. <laughs> I mean, literally. It's like I have come to the conclusion this summer, I already knew there was gonna be heat in that place reserved for Satan and those who follow him, right? I knew there was flames. I am convinced after this summer that it's also gonna be like 98% humidity. Like, eternal punishment, it's 98%. So it's been like 100 hell degrees outside, and when you come in to the house and, you're, and you get blasted by the air conditioning, it's like what? It's like, ah, because your AC's been properly set at like 66 degrees. <laughs> properly. Maybe 67? But properly, I, I don't wanna hear, I can't even hear up here any other comments coming down here. It's properly set at 67 degrees, and that's why when you come in from the heat, you're like, ah, oh, it's what? Refreshing. It's refreshing. We want to be refreshed. I think everyone has that desire to feel that. And I think in our lives, we want to feel that hope, right? We want to feel the joy. We want to feel the life come into our lives, and that, just that goodness. And I just think about it. I don't, I think everyone wants this. I don't think anyone got up this morning, got dressed sitting in a church today. So you know what I really need? I really need a time of drought. I would, I mean, I don't know what the answer is, but I just think I need some times of anxiety and stress, dark, no, no one wants that. No one really wants that. Listen, I believe, even at the core, even if they're not a Christian, at the core of every human person, there is this desire, they might not call it this, to be blessed, they might call it, we might think this is shallow, but to be happy, to have joy, to have something on the inside. I believe every human being is created that way to desire to be refreshed. And so if you're here and you don't wanna be, I mean, that's kind of, I mean, I don't wanna call anyone an idiot. I want, I'll use a better word. That's kind of being a moron. <laughs> that's a better word, Kendall? That's a better, thank you. I don't know. It's not smart. I think we have to have that desire. So I think we have that in the room. We have people here, those watching. I think that's a natural thing for mankind. We wanna be refreshed. We wanna have life. We wanna have the joy. We wanna be invigorated. We wanna have energy. We wanna have the strength, the hope, all those things, right? We may not have it, but it's a desire in our hearts. And so this morning, the question really is how then do we get it? How do we get times of refreshing in our lives? How do we get times of refreshing in our homes, in our families, in our marriages, in a church? How do we get this? And so I wanna to turn to uh, Acts chapter three, verse 19. This is the scripture that we kinda launched out of uh, the first week with JD. Acts chapter three, verse 19. <clears throat> this is Peter. He just got done healing the lame man, right? He's taking full opportunity of the crowd. He's seizing the moment. He is squeezing the day here. So he's preaching. And uh, he says this, repent, therefore, and turn back, that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. So we get this right away. If we want to have times of refreshing, which we all have I've admitted for you, we, I'm just telling you, we all want it, right? If we all want times of refreshing, there is some action required. Specifically in this passage, the action of repentance. To repent, that's the action verb in the sentence, okay? Or whatever they call it. I don't know if there's any English people in there. There's probably even a cooler name 
You know, they have all those cool names for different things. It's, it's a verb to me, that's all I know. To repent, that's the action. And I know, I was just even this morning watching some people, there's a lot of newer faces here. Maybe you're new to this. I wanna take a second to talk to you what repentance means. It's not a, it's not a word that we use in our normal everyday life, right? It's, it's, a very, it's a religious word, it's a church word. It's not something you grew up just using. If your friend you know, did you wrong, you didn't just look at him and say, hey, bud, you need to repent. That's not like what came out of your mouth, right? And so I want to just really briefly here tell you what this means so you understand. The Greek word translated repentance in the New Testament means this. I found this definition. I like this. To change one's way of life as the result of a complete change of thought and attitude with regard to sin and righteousness. All right, so we understand that if you've been around for a while, you know it's a changing of your mind. Repentance means you don't have a life change, but it's gonna be a result of a complete change in the way you think, your mindset, and your attitude in regard to whatever it is that you are thinking about. And that's, in this sense, in regards to sin and righteousness. I was thinking about this, it's changing your mindset or thinking that does not align with the word of God. JD was preaching, I thought it was awesome, two weeks ago, about this whole concept that they need to repent from not believing what they just saw in the healing. Here God wanted to do the impossible and they need to repent from not believing. See, without repentance, we will, as people, we will stay locked up into lies, right, that cause us not to have refreshing in our lives. Pastor Eric preached a marvelous message last week. If you did, weren't here, I highly recommend you get it on uh, having forgiveness or preaching against forgiveness. I thought it was marvelous. One of the better sermons I've ever heard him preach. I thought it was so good, so helpful. And in that, you would have to get, say, listen, this is what the Word of God, the Word of God says to forgive. And so what you need to do then is if you don't want to, or if you feel like you have the right not to, then you need to change your mindset, you need to change your thinking in the lie. What lie? The lie that says I have a right to be unforgiving. I'm just by nature not someone that holds that unforgiveness, it's just not who I am. I'm not saying, I got plenty of other things, trust me. That's just not by my nature, my personality to naturally do that. But I was just talking to Jill about this the other day. I said, of all things, to not repent of or not change your mind on, you don't, you don't pick the thing that he says, hey, if you don't do this, you yourself won't be forgiven. I mean, like, that's kind of dangerous. Like, I'm not playing around with that. Of all things, that's one thing, like, right, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna repent. And so, there's this whole idea, it's a changing of your mind to get in line with what God is saying about your life. Just like what Pastor C was saying just a little bit ago, what you are able to see, what is God saying? Hey, we know there's all kinds of stuff in scripture, he says, you're the head and not the tail, all right? Well, if you continue to see yourself as the butt, right, you need to repent, you need to change your mind. And see yourself as the head, you're an heir, you're a child of God, you've been redeemed, you've been justified. The Bible says you are the righteousness of God. And some people say, no, I'm just a sinner. No, you need to repent of that thinking. That's not what the word of God says about you. You need to change your thinking to line up with the word of God, your attitudes. I was thinking about this, I was talking to Joe about this last night, we were sitting outside and I was actually just studying and it felt like, kind of popped, I don't know if it was from God or not, but it felt like that, it came out of nowhere. And it's concerning our culture. Like as I think, and it's crept up into the church, and uh, repentance, the whole idea of it, is not really a popular thing right now. Like, I believe what I believe, and no one else should tell me differently, right? And whatever I believe is the truth. Now you might believe something different and that can be truth for you. This is our culture, it's not, that's not biblical, but there's this idea that, that God, and this idea that, it's okay, we have these things about culture, there's all kinds of stuff going on in our, in our world. 
And I feel like right now, and it's seeping into the church, that we feel like God needs to adjust his thinking to fit our culture. And we have this thinking like, God, I know those are your words, but they're a little dated. It's a little old fashioned. God, do you understand what's in our culture? We understand that there's some other things going on, so you need to adjust your thinking on what is right and wrong. In other words, we have a culture is kind of, not like actually saying this, but kind of saying, God, you're the one who needs to repent. You're the one who needs to change your mind about this situation or this action or this thing. And like, God, I know this has been your word from the foundation of the earth. But our time is special. Our generation is a little different. And so we need you to adjust your word to who we are. We need to change, you need to change your mindset, your thinking, please, to fit us. If you are really a loving God, then you can see that some of your ways are a little outdated, God. Some of your ways seem a little old-fashioned, God. And invariably, we don't realize we're doing this and it's crept into the church. Here, he's saying, repent. Change your people of God. Change your mindset. Change your thinking so that times of refreshing come. We're like, no, we refuse. We actually think you need to change. And that's twisted. That's messy. That's messed up, isn't it? I mean, like, that is, but that is what we're pushing off. And then we sit in a culture now. And I was just talking to Jill. She had this thing happen at a gym. It was just demonic. It was just a weird demonic thing. I won't get into it, but it's just demonic. And it's like, we're seeing more and more of that kind of stuff. Just weird stuff. And here a nation that was built on repentance, built on God. And you say, well, was it, it was just religion. Yeah, but it was God. Like, like he should be reverenced. I might not do the word, but there is a word and it's the final word. And we're just making any truth be the truth, any way be the way, and having God adjust to it. And then we're bewildered that we have a nation that's being full of darkness, demonic, back to stuff that you'd have to go to a third world nation before or other countries to experience, we are now seeing in our own nation. JD knows it's like, Back in the day, if you really want to have a deliverance ministry, you needed to go to like one of those islands that had all the, you know, the witchcraft going on and there's be all this demonic. You don't really have to go that far anymore. So let's get back to this message. It says, repent therefore, turn back, that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. I want you to think of your life, whatever's going on, if you're not experiencing times of refreshing, right? Whatever that looks like or seems like to you, then there might be a need for a change of your mindset. There might be a need for what we call repentance, to turn, to change, right? If you're not experiencing it in your home, you're not experiencing it in a church, if you're not experiencing it in your own personal life, then there might be a need for repentance. And what do we need to repent of? Well, I mean, I've been past for a little while, and uh, there's probably a whole list of stuff in this room. Let's just put it that way. There's probably a whole list. I mean, there's a lot of people in here. There's people watching. There's probably a lot of things you need to change your mind about and repent of. But as I was praying, I felt like God spoke to me this. And I wanna share with you this. I believe for many of us, there is a need to repent from trying to get refreshing from something other than the presence of the Lord. We can talk about all the little individual little things, sins or whatever, but what I felt like I needed to share with this group and those watching is what we really need to repent of 
is us trying to get refreshing from something other than the presence of the God. We need to repent. We're not turning to him to be the source. Here's the problem for many. We are trading God's best, which is him, for something else. We're running to something else to get refreshed. And what we end up doing is we end up turning things in our lives. Some things are good things or bad things, don't really matter. We, we come and we turn things into our lives, we turn to them, and we begin to put, give them power and begin to trust in them to solve our soul's issues. It could be a hundred different things. What is it we need? I believe we need the fact that we run to other things to fix something on the inside that only, only, only God can do. It says this, the refreshing comes from where? The presence of the Lord. Not anything else. Not anything else. And I think as a culture, even, I mean, all time, even in Christianity and churches, we fall in this trap. We get a little anxious, we get anxiety, we get fearful, we get whatever's going on, we feel a little dry on the inside, we feel tired on the inside, we feel like we need something to help us. And we begin to turn to those things. I say, okay, I think that, that's gonna help fix it. We turn to those things, okay, I'm gonna trust if I just go spend that time binging for five hours at Netflix, it's gonna rejuvenate me. I'm doing whatever. And here's the thing, and this is what I wanna, as you do that, if you do that to things, it could be even a person, when you begin to turn to those things and try to get out of those things. They're refreshing. You try to get out of those things that only God can do. What you end up turning that thing into is what the Bible calls an idol. You may be new here, you may never heard of idols. Let me just give you a quick uh, short cut here on the Bible. They're frowned upon. Okay. Like I, you can do a bunch of study after this if you want. You can go Google it and stuff. Let me just tell you this, idols, in the Word of God, are frowned upon, okay? It's a big deal. It's a big deal, like, and you think idols, we think of like the little carved statues or whatever that they're bowing down to worship to, and yeah, the people have those, and people did have those. But listen, the idols in our lives are much more subtle, which makes them a little more dangerous. I mean, if you got a little statue, I'm like, hey, what are you doing? I'm coming over, we're gonna burn that thing, okay? Let's light that thing on fire. Quit bound to that stupid thing. I mean, you, you think that thing, that little wood figurine, is gonna help fix your soul? You think that thing that you created, that thing that was created, is gonna fix something on the inside? You think that thing has the power to refresh, the power to give you hope, the power to, to strengthen you, the power to comfort you? You think that thing? And we're like, that's foolish, I can't believe you don't wanna do it. But yet we do it all the time. We look to things, they might not be statues or whatever, but we put power, we put a, a confidence in things all the time to try to fix something on the inside. You guys understand what I'm talking about, it's called idolatry. John Piper, he's a pastor, a theologian, he, he says this about idolatry. He says it starts in the heart. Craving, wanting, being satisfied by anything that you treasure more than God. That's, that's, pretty, that's pretty high up there. That's a high standard. This is idolatry. It starts in the heart. Craving, wanting, being satisfied by anything that you treasure more than God. He goes on to say this. It is the thing, the thing loved or the person loved more than God wanted more to the God, desired more than God, treasured more than God. Like, oh shoot, I might have a couple of these little things in my life. Well, what's the response? Repent, change your mind, change your thinking. 
And we're like, what, what do you mean? How do you, how do you do that? Stop believing that those things are gonna provide for you what only the presence of the Lord can provide. If you wanna be refreshed, I mean, if you really wanna have the life of God on the inside, if you really wanna have something stirring on the inside of you, you gotta stop turning to everything else except for him. And the Bible says this, uh, Paul is commanding Tim to do, say this and, uh, to those who are wealthy in chapter six of uh, First Timothy, he says, hey, tell them not to put their hope or their confidence in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope or confidence in God who what? Richly provides all things for what? Our enjoyment. And here's the sad thing, it's so sad. We live in probably the most prosperous nation, I mean across the board, from top to bottom, that has ever existed on the earth. Yeah, there's been prosperous kingdoms, right? That the king was really wealthy, but there was really, really, in our nation, think about everything we have. We live in one of the most prosperous nations who ever have existed. And yet we have an entire generation that seems that he can't enjoy anything. Why? Because they are treating those things and trying to make those things be something to their soul which they were never created to be. And when you do that, guess what? You're unable to actually turn around and to enjoy those things. One of the biggest blessings in my life, one of the things that gives me the most joy in my life, my family. My family. There is nothing else in this world that gives me more joy, more enjoyment, the blessing than my family. But if I try to pull something out of my wife or my children, if I try to get something because I'm lacking on the inside, so I'm trying to pull this something out of them to try to fulfill something I will lack on the inside. Guess what? I'm gonna cause something to happen in my family or in my marriage, right, where I'm gonna turn around and I'm not gonna be able to enjoy them. When I put them in a spot where only God can be, guess what? My own family can become an idol. And what a sad thing, right? If you have blessings all around you, but we're unable to enjoy them, why? Because we're putting them in a place they were never intended to be. So he says this, he's like, if you don't have refreshing, then you need to repent and turn back to me. Turn back to God. That times of refreshing can come from the presence of the Lord. Here's the problem, this is why it's so uh, deceptive, these idols and, I don't know if I call them idols, does that sound too harsh a little bit? Like, they are what they are, right? Here's the problem with these things, it's, it's sin in general, but with idols, is that there's actually like a fleeting or like a false or counterfeit refreshment that comes from them. That's why it's so deceiving. It's so deceptive, right? The Bible says there's fleeting pleasure in what? Sin. Like I talk about binging on Netflix. I like to use an analogy because I think all of us can kind of relate to it at one point in our lives of having a hard day, exhausted, right? Things went wrong. Everything was like, oh, this day was like woofta, you know? Don't know what UFTA is, it's a Norwegian thing, it's like, oh my, okay. Uh, <laughs> and we begin to think thoughts, right? We don't know, it might be subconsciously, but there's something that goes through our head. We're having a hard day, we're feeling dry, we're feeling anxious, we're afraid, whatever it is. And we start to tell ourselves, if, oh, okay, I just need to go home, I just need to sit down, I think I'm gonna watch this Netflix series for the next eight hours of my life. And after I wake up from that, oh boy, I'm gonna feel so refreshed, right? It's a lie, right? 
It doesn't. Now, the very moment you sit down, you're, you're like, oh, this is good. That first show, you're like, okay. There's a, there's a deception in it, right? But then those things, they trap you, and you're like eight hours in. You're like, I, I need to go to church. I need to repent of something. There's something's going on here. And flip it. What if you just change your mind and say, you know what? Doing whatever, and everyone has their version of that, right? If it's not, it's your version of something else to help solve that problem. What if you changed it? What if you came home and was like, you know what? What I need to do is the very thing that my flesh doesn't want to do right now. And I need to probably go spend about 30 minutes, 20 minutes in the presence of the Lord. I need to worship, I need to, I need to, do, I, need to I need to get out of whatever I'm in and I believe, God, that you are the source of life. If I'm afraid, I believe if I'm with you, something's gonna change. If I'm dry, I believe refreshing. If I'm concerned about it, there's gonna be hope. I believe that everything I need, everything my soul needs is gonna come from you. And you go spend the time, 30 minutes in the presence of the Lord. And then guess what? Now you're not operating out of lack. And you can turn around and go and enjoy something that evening. Your family, your kids, a movie, or whatever it is. Because it's not all those things. They're not the problem. Your money is not the problem. You are, and what you place on these things. We want times of refreshing. I'm telling you, this is how we gotta get it. We want things to be well. And here's the powerful thing about the presence of the Lord and the refreshment that comes out of the presence of the Lord. It's not circumstantial to what's going on. You guys have been through a lot of stuff over the years, right? All hell can be breaking out around you. And you can get in the presence of the Lord. <laughs> is there anything in the world, right? There's so much that's so, is based on the circumstances. But I can get in no matter what's going on in my life. I can get in the presence of God, and all of a sudden, something's happening. There's a life, Pastor Mark, there's an energy. There's a few yay gods in there, right? Yeah. It's changed everything. And listen, that's what he wants to be. I mean, thinking from God's perspective, he's like, I'm the father. I got everything you need. What? what are you doing? What are you doing? Why are you turning these other things? Change your mind. I have a scripture that God kind of gave to me that kind of wraps this, what I'm just saying up here a little bit. In Jeremiah chapter two, verse 13, this is from the NIV. It says, my people have committed two sins. They have forsaken me the spring of living water, listen to this, and have dug their own cisterns, broken cisterns that cannot hold water. What's he saying? I have a couple things against you. You forgot about, you forsaken me, you forgot about me. The one who can do the very thing you're wanting. You forgot about me. The one, he's saying, I am the spring of living water. I am the one who can refresh you. I'm it. I'm the one who can do what your soul is longing for. And he's saying, quit trying to masquerade or cover up your soul's lack with all this other stuff. And he said, listen, you've done a couple things. You're forsaking me. And then you turn around and you try to dig out your own cistern, right? What are the cisterns? They try, they're, they're dug in to try to hold water. He said, listen, you're trying to do something that doesn't have the power, it does not hold living water, it is broken. It's broken. And God wants to come in and he wants to reestablish himself. Listen, we can talk about refreshing, we can talk about life, we can talk about all these wonderful things that the word of God promises us. But listen, if we continue to have a practice every day in habits that are, in essence, forsaking him or forgetting him in this area, 
and continue to turn to other things, we are not gonna live the refreshed life. The very thing that God wants for us. So you guys are getting this? Where does this come from? You got some friends here? I want you again, this comes from what? The presence of the Lord. How many know that in the presence of the Lord, there is the fullness of what? Yeah. The fullness of joy, life, everything you need. Everything my family needs, guess what? It's gonna be found in the presence of the Lord. Not in anything else. The joy, the goodness, the hope, everything, everything you need. Everything, this, this section over here, they need it too, but everything you need. Xavier, you're about to be married, man. Hey, everything you need, young man. Listen, everything you need to be a husband, to be a man of God, is gonna be found in the presence of the Lord. Nothing else, nothing else has the power to do what you need for your wife, for your future family, for the people that you're gonna influence, nothing else. He said, if you committed two things, you've forsaken me, the spring of living water, and you've tried to dig something out on your own. And that is what we need to repent of. I'm gonna share one more scripture here. We got time. I'm gonna end on this. Oh, I want this. Tell me, I want this. I want you guys to always be walking the refreshing. Just that life. I love hanging around with Sam because Samuel's like, he, he can be a spring of living water himself, right? Energy. I want this for you guys. Nothing else is gonna do what your soul longs for. It's the presence of the Lord. It's the presence of God. We mean Tori, Justin, right? We know this, right? Every, everything that we want and need, it's him. It's always been him. It's always been him. JJ, right? It's been always been him. In Leviticus chapter 26, I'll paraphrase the first couple of verses, but he's speaking and telling them to get rid of their idols. Don't make idols, don't carve anything, don't do any of that stuff. He says, I am the Lord. Listen to me, follow my decrees, follow my ways. He says, and if you do this, in verse four it says this, I will send you the seasonal rains. The land will then yield its crops and the trees of the field will produce their fruit. Your thresh threshing season will overlap with the grape harvest. Your grape harvest will overlap with the season of planting grain. You will eat your fill and live securely in your land. I will give you peace in the land and you will be able to sleep with no cause of fear. I will rid the land of wild animals and keep your enemies out of your land. In fact, you will chase down your enemies and slaughter them with the sword, spiritually speaking. Father, you will chase a hundred, a hundred of you will chase 10,000. All your enemies will fall beneath your sword. I will look favorably upon you, making you fertile and multiplying your people. And I will fulfill my covenant with you. You will have a, such a surplus of crops that you will need to clear out the old grain to make room for the new harvest. In other words, he says, I will give you times of refreshing and it goes on this is the best part he said then in verse 11 I will live among you and I will not despise you I will walk among you and be your God and you will be my people 
I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt so that you will no longer be slaves. I broke the yoke of slavery from your neck so you can walk with your head held high. That is the promise for us. That is what I want for this church. I want times, JD, I want times, Pastor Eric, Pastor Stevie, I want times of refreshing. I was studying that word times. It was like a messianic, it's speaking of the messianic age. It's really referring to chapter two of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Listen, some of you gotta stop just having moments of refreshing. How many of you get tired of just moments of refreshing? I mean, I love our services, but if this is the only time you can get refreshing, that's not good. Or you're like, maybe next month or two months, or I'll get really dry, maybe I'll get a moment of refreshing. No, he said time, seasons. It's supposed to be a continual thing of the Holy Spirit in our lives. That's what I want, that's what I'm shooting for. I'm not shooting for a little moment, Paul. There's a little moment, oh, that felt good. I'm not, I don't want John, hey, just soothe my demons today. Make me feel a little relief. Do I stagger back here next week? No, for times. In our homes, times of refreshing. Times of his life, his energy, the strength, the spirit of God moving in us. That line, the very last line of Leviticus, I saw that for some people here. Some of you are having such trouble experience what's coming from heaven because you still have the yoke of slavery around your neck. And I believe with all, I have faith today that if that's you in this room today, I believe the power of the Holy Spirit is gonna break that yoke off of your life, that yoke of slavery. Listen, there's a yoke to be had, but it's not of slavery. He said, my yoke is easy, my yoke is light. Listen, he is the one who says, come and drink from me. Be refreshed from me. And you'll never thirst again. You'll never thirst again. Listen, I believe today, this morning, it's a time of refreshing. I believe we're walking into a time, a season, a continual refresh. I am not interested in a moment. I'll be honest, this might seem heretical. I'm not really interested in one good service. I'm not interested in like four or five of them. I'm interested in the continual flow of the Holy Spirit. The continual refreshing in our lives that we, we get on this and we continue to move. Our marriages are continually being refreshed by the Holy Spirit, why? Because we are continually changing our mind, we're continually repenting, we're continuing to adjust our thinking to get in line with Him. This morning, this morning, I believe God wants to come down, He's gonna break some yokes off. I believe there's some people here, you need to be refreshed. And it's gonna come from the presence of the Lord. And this is a little bit, you don't have to walk out of faith, but I, you don't have to say, tell me what it is. But if you've had any kind of yoke of slavery, any kind of yoke, you're like, no, that's me. I don't care what it is. But you know, it's, it's, it's locking you up, right? It's slowing you down. Before I invite everybody else up, I want you, I want to invite those people right now. If you're here today, like there's some things I need to have broken off my life. There's, there's some things around my neck. Come up here. I believe today is your day. A slave no more. And is your friend. Tell him you're coming. I've been thinking about you all night. Today is your day of freedom, sir. I believe the power of God. You know why? Because I experienced it myself. 
I experienced the power of God that brought freedom, that broke off things. And today it can happen for you. My new friends I just met from I so Iowa, right? Des Moines area. Today. He said, I am the Lord. I have brought you out of Egypt. And I have broken the yoke of slavery. I have broken this. Let's say the Lord in your life. I have broken. slavery. I've broken the yoke of addiction. I am the Lord. This is what he says. I have broken everything trying to make you a slave. And right now, I release the power of the Spirit of God. refreshing but guess what right now you can change your mind about it you can turn back to him and make him your source and I believe in the presence of God right now I believe there's some people in this room you are gonna be refreshed I want to invite anybody up here right now you say you know what I need I need to be refreshed again in the presence of the Lord, I need the Spirit of God to refresh me. I want you to invite you. Let's get our prayer warriors up here. Church, this is what I want. I want continual refreshing in your life. I want you to drink from the living water. I want you to drink from the spring of living water today for our homes, for our marriages, for our families. 
And listen, it's gonna come from the presence. Howard's right now. Sorry, you just stopped me in my tracks. Someone, why don't you go over there quick? Right now, right now, just let the presence of the Lord. Come on, let the presence of the Lord refresh you this. Refreshing right now. Father, we come to you right now. Let's just pray. Father, we want refreshing. We want your life. We want your joy. We repent. We turn from every other thing. We ask that you would come and fill us and refresh us and strengthen us today. In the name of Jesus. All right. You guys can play. I want you guys to come. If there's anybody else in here, we're at prayer warriors. I want you to be refreshed in the presence of God. Amen.